June Haver was a well-known actress who starred in many famous movies. She was loved by both her fans and colleagues for her talent and charm. If you have any stories or memories about her, please share them in the comments below. Stay tuned as we reveal interesting facts about her life and career, including funny, surprising, and sad moments. Born in Rock Island, Illinois, June Haver grew up in a close-knit family that supported her passion for singing and dancing. Encouraged by her parents, she attended dance classes and performed in local talent shows. During her teenage years, a talent scout noticed her and arranged auditions for Hollywood films. She got her big break when a film producer saw her potential and kickstarted her acting career. In Hollywood, she learned from experienced actors and directors, improving her skills both on and off screen. Despite facing challenges, June remained determined to succeed. Her performances, influenced by her family values, resonated with audiences and earned critical acclaim. From a small town girl, she rose to become a Hollywood star, showcasing talent, hard work, and perseverance. In Love Nest, June Haver played Connie Scott, the caring landlady whose character was deeply influenced by her own life. She based her portrayal on personal experiences, making it authentic. When her sister struggled to find a place to live because she had a child and a puppy, Connie didn't just understand the situation. She took action. She led the construction of an apartment building in Westwood, California, with families in mind, including fenced-in areas and big closets for kids. What made her effort even more special was her rule. She only rented to families with children, showing her dedication to creating a good environment for young ones. June Haver wasn't the only one with family ties to entertainment. Her mother, Marie Stovner, was also famous, performing on stage and screen. In Love Nest, another star emerged alongside Haver Marilyn Monroe. Monroe's first movie role involved saying just one word, hi, to her co-star. But it marked the beginning of her legendary career. Monroe's presence on screen left a lasting impression, setting her on the path to fame. Love Nest wasn't just a movie, it was a blend of real-life stories and movie magic, creating memorable moments that still capture audiences today. June Haver had a remarkable career in both movies and TV. In 1996, she sold her large ranch in Healdsburg to the Gallo family, which she owned with her late husband Fred McMurray. After that, she lived in Brentwood. Sadly, she passed away at her home there in 2005. While she appeared on TV, her only regular role was as herself in the Lucy Daisy Comedy Hour in 1957. In the movie Scudda Who, Scudda Hey, she played the character Rad McGill. Interestingly, this film is often noted as Marilyn Monroe's first screen appearance, although Monroe's part is brief. You can spot her for a quick moment as she interacts with Haver's character outside a church. Haver's work in entertainment is still fondly remembered and valued by fans and historians alike. June Haver, known for her role as Connie Scott in the film Love Nest, acted alongside Marilyn Monroe, who was just 10 days older. In the movie, she charmed audiences with her talent. Throughout her life, she was surrounded by loved ones who deeply cared for her. She is survived by her adopted daughters, Kate and Lori McMurray, who inherited her grace and spirit. Her stepson, Robert McMurray, stepdaughter Susan Poole, along with seven grandchildren and four great-grandchildren, carry on her memory with fond memories and admiration. June Haver's work in movies will always be remembered as her performances continue to inspire actors and movie lovers alike. Her name will forever be linked with elegance and grace in Hollywood. This tribute shows how much she influenced the film industry and beyond. June Haver, known for her roles in Hollywood films, shared a life with actor Fred McMurray. Together, they adopted twin daughters named Catherine and Lori. The family lived at 485 Hammond Doctor in Brentwood Heights, a house once occupied by McMurray and his first wife. This residence remains unchanged since December 2021. Before her film career, she participated in the 1942 Beverly Hills High School production of Ever Since Eve. June Haver's life intertwined with Hollywood history, leaving a lasting impact through her family and performances. June Haver is buried at Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City, California, next to her husband, Fred McMurray. They're in a building called the Mausoleum in D1, Room 7. In the movie, The Dolly Sisters, she played the character Rosica Rosie Dolly. People often compared her to Betty Grable because she was a bit smaller than her. During the filming of Where Do We Go From Here, she was supposed to sing Moral, they started filming late, and by the time they finished, the war was over, 
so the song wasn't relevant anymore. Even though this was disappointing, she still had a successful career with many memorable performances. Fans and admirers continue to celebrate her talent and charm. This was actress June Haver's connection with her future husband, Fred McMurray, was set up by none other than John Wayne, according to Haver's daughter, Kate. The introduction led to a lasting relationship between them. During an interview for a book about the architect of the Havern home, June Haver mentioned the presence of hidden passages within the house. However, she didn't give away any details during the interview, where I was also present. In the film, The Dolly Sisters, June Haver played the character Rosica Rosie Dolly alongside Betty Grable and a chorus of girls. Notably, the movie includes scenes where the actresses, including Haver, appear in blackface. These snippets give insight into various aspects of June Haver's life, from her introduction to Fred McMurray arranged by John Wayne to her confirmation of secret passages in the Havern home during an interview. Additionally, her role in the Dolly Sisters reflects the diverse experiences within her acting career. June Haver started playing the piano with the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra when she was only seven. At 11, she was already on local radio doing different things like writing and hosting. She played Rad McGill in Scudda, who, Scudda Hey, and later did a radio version of it with Lon McAllister. Working with Betty Grable in the Dolly Sisters was a big deal for her career. Even though she was smaller than Grable, people called her Pocket Grable. They only did one musical movie together. June Haver was good at lots of things in her roles, making her well-known in entertainment. This was June Haver starred as Connie Scott in Love Nest alongside William Lundigan. Both are laid to rest at Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City, California. She was engaged to studio dentist John Duzik until his unexpected death. In February 1953, she entered a convent in Xavier, Kansas, intending to become a nun. A serious illness compelled her to return to California in September 1953. Although she planned to go back to the convent after recovering, she never did. In Scudder Who, Scudder Hey, she played Rad McGill. Marilyn Monroe's soul line in the movie was directed towards her. The two actresses would reunite three years later in Love Nest, with Monroe landing a more significant role. In Love Nest, June Haver played the role of Connie Scott, her sole black and white feature film. Out of her 14 other movies released from 1943 to 1953, all filmed in vibrant technicolor, this one stood out. Surprisingly, it didn't receive a review from the New York Times. Her first spouse, Jim Limetree Zito, a trumpet player, met her when she was a teenage singer for Ted Fiorito's band. They were married for only a year, from 1947 to 1948, Later, she became engaged to a dentist named John Duzik, but sadly, he passed away after a routine surgery before they could tie the knot. In 1949, after she learned about her sister's housing difficulties due to having a child and a puppy, she took action. She constructed an apartment building in Westwood, California. The property was fenced for safety, and each apartment had closets with small hangers for children's clothes. She insisted on renting only to families with kids, 